So you can see here pretty quickly that um, that uh, particular test involved uh, the engineers and the flight the flight test pilots to be inside the the device itself while it's being tested. We do a lot of things in the lab where we're safely uh, standing on the other side of the lab, even wearing safety goggles and maybe even face shields, uh, where the, the test pilots were inside the material itself, uh, kind of a, a dangerous place to put yourself. Um, a lot of um, testing goes into um, very complex uh, material-based products um, like automobiles and like aircraft. Um, you guys have heard me drone on about my experience uh, working uh, with uh, the aircraft industry uh, before I joined LaSalle, uh, working at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and for some of the aircraft manufacturers like Boeing and Lockheed and then doing some testing for engine manufacturers like Pratt & Whitney and General Electric. Um, so I'm familiar with all these types of tests and wanted to show you these guys as well. It's still material testing, and again, the idea is to design the test to make sure that the giant thing that you're trying to sell um, behaves properly uh, when it uh, comes into uh, particular, condi particular conditions. Um, the flutter test for that Airbus was definitely one of them. Uh, in this case, this is a little vignette of, uh, of how we do uh, engine testing. Um, some, some planes have four engines, as we just saw in the giant uh, Super Jumbo Airbus. Um, the majority of, of, of planes these days um, to be, um, to be uh, uh, fuel conscious uh, are, are piloted or, or, or pushed by only two engines. So we have to make sure that both engines uh, survive and, and work just fine. Uh, if you're driving your car and your engine stops, hopefully you can just sort of coast to the side of the road. Uh, if you're in a giant passenger jet and one of your engines fails, uh, that um, could be difficult. They actually test it to make sure it can still fly on one engine. But when both engines fail, um, that's a difficult situation. Um, so some, uh, some video here of some, some doing some testing and en uh, engine testing and what goes, what goes into that. Before the engine could be certified for flight, it had to be put through a battery of demanding tests. The testing is to assure that the engine can, can fly in any environment safely. We look at any extreme environments and make the testing more severe than what you'll see in operation on an aircraft. We have water ingestion testing. We take in about four and a half tons of water a minute and show that the engine can continue to operate and not stall taking in that kind of volume of water. We also do hail ingestion testing. We have several little cannons that shoot hail into the engine. They shoot about three quarters of a ton of hail in 30 seconds. Nothing was left to chance. Technicians tried to recreate and analyze every possible problem that could happen to the engine. An engine, when it's operating on an aircraft, takes in a lot of air. It can also take in anything else in the environment, such as a bird. So we're required per the FAA to shoot bird carcasses into the engine and to show that we can continue to sustain operation even after taking in the bird carcasses. So we're back. So you can see, um, n notice a bird ingestion is actually one of the tests they have to do. They, of course, have made, made uh, sure that uh, they highlighted that they're using bird carcasses. The, the birds have already been deceased. They're not, um, they're not throwing... Um, Live birds into the into the um, into the engine. They also do uh, the blade uh, shedding tests. You know what happens if one of these spinning blades happens to happens to fall apart, which is kind of cool. So I think uh, I think this one would actually show a a, a, a a blade shedding test. Here in Hucknall, Nottinghamshire, another test engine will soon be a smoking ruin deliberately destroyed as part of a dramatic and crucial safety test. It's an important milestone for the entire A380 project. And as engineer Hilary Barton travels to the test, she admits to some nerves. I must have got a few butterflies at the moment, but basically um, everybody's done the preparation and it's just now a matter of, of getting on and doing the test. But obviously before the the engine starts, you're sitting there just kind of hoping it all go well, but uh, just really waiting for it to happen now. Every few years, a fan blade will fail in a jet engine somewhere in the world. A rare but violent event that must not put lives in danger. 
At the root of the colored blade is an explosive charge. With the engine at full power, it will be detonated, releasing the blade with astonishing force. Whatever happens, the blade must not be allowed to burst out of the engine, where, in real life, it could do serious damage to the rest of the aircraft. In a room 200 yards away, watching via a video link, are 25 key personnel, each hoping the test goes as planned. In the split second the blade is released, the engine must successfully contain an enormous amount of energy. It is a very, it is a very violent um, test. This thing is spinning around, it's at full power, so you've got uh, the forces on, on the blade uh, are quite, quite significant. It's like having a, a locomotive uh, hanging on, on, that, on that blade. So you're obviously having to contain the energy of, of that system. So there's a lot of energy involved in the design and containment of the, of the blade. I mean, the whole, you know, the whole engine will get a huge, big shape. As ever, the size of the A380 increases the challenge. The bigger the engine, the bigger the blades, and the greater the energy released if one were to fail. Spinning at 3,000 revolutions per minute, the blades experience a force of more than 7,000 times their own weight. So everything is done to make them as light and as strong as possible. A top secret process molds the plates from ultra strong, ultra light titanium alloy. To save further weight, the blades are heated to 900 degrees in a furnace until they are softened. The gas is pumped into cavities inside the blade, inflating it like a long, thin balloon. The result is a hollow part curved in three directions for aerodynamic efficiency. Supremely strong, yet light enough for someone to pick up and move quite easily. Each one costs the same as a luxury car. And a full set of 24 are about to be destroyed in the name of safety. As the critical test for the Airbus A380's engine gets underway, it's run for five minutes at low power, so final checks can be made. The main concern is that as the blade is blown free, the casing around the fan absorbs the huge impact and prevents potentially lethal shrapnel from escaping. High-speed film cameras are used to analyze the action, and at last, the throttles are opened and the engine brought to its full, awesome power. This is what it feels like to be inside a building 200 yards away from a nine million pound blade off event. Blade off testing is normally top secret. But for the first time, Rolls-Royce have released this footage. Although the engine was totally destroyed, the fan case did its job, and no large lumps of metal were ejected. For Hilary Barton, it's been a good day. I feel very relieved, obviously it's gone well, we've had a good test and it's all credit to the guys and yes, we've, we've, got, we've got a successful test under a belt, so I uh, feel relieved and really pleased. <laughs>